So this boss is a bit more difficult. Um, on this fight, it's mainly about the intermission. The up phases are super simple. Um, let me show you our comp for this. So we ran, again, the tanks that we were going to run for Sylvanas. Uh, five healers. There's no DPS check, so you're better off just playing it safe. Um, and then for DPS, just whatever you want, you can bring to this fight. There's no single DPS that brings like something game-breaking. Um, so just bring your best players here. So phase one, there are two push timings that you can do. Um, and you want to pick either one based on your raid's DPS. So the push for phase one into phase two, you want it to be either before the second add spawns or before the third add spawns, depending on your DPS. Um, in this kill video, we pushed to phase two before the second add, but it was very close. Um, on our very first kill, we pushed into second phase um, after killing the second add and before the third. So main thing here is the mythic specific debuff just makes you slow uh, and slow everyone else around you. Uh, so for melee, we just move to the side. Same for ranged. Person targeted by the chains uh, just runs to the center. Melee helps them out. You can drop like a Windrush Totem, Roar, anything like that to make the pool a little bit more manageable. Um, but generally, you don't want to have like your whole raid in it because then everyone's losing DPS. If you're using just your melee, then they'll get pulled more, but they don't lose much because they're melee. So in the intermission here, we split our raid in half, and I'm actually going to have to use raid plan for this. Um, so intermission, you get orange ad spawning on this side, purple ad spawning on this side. This ad will apply the orange debuff to you. This ad will apply the purple debuff to you. If you don't know, if you get um, within, I believe it's 10 yards of the opposite debuff, you blow up, deal damage, die, it's bad. So this entire phase, you have to play around each other. Ads come down. Um, I will get orange debuff here. As soon as it applies, there it is. And so do all the ranged. As you can see, every single ranged DPS, uh, except for Doravan, who's like off doing his own thing, um, every single range DPS and range healer get the same debuff. So what you're going to do is have like, you know, half your melee here, half your melee here, all your range DPS on one side, um, and get the orange debuff. So you don't actually have to be this close as long as you're more than halfway, whichever one you're closer to, you will get that one, um, on the first tick. So then this orange ad gets dragged to the back. Melee follow. Um, tanks will be standing here. Purple ad does the same. You drag it to the wall. Melee healers stand here. Tank hits it. Um, you want to drop puddles along the wall, same as heroic, blah, blah, blah. But one big difference is that once you reach six stacks, you want to do a swap. So the way the swap is going to work is that your range DPS and melee DPS from orange side, you can do either direction here. I'm just going to explain what we did. Follow along the wall and run to purple. That's a straight line from orange to purple. What your purple players are going to do is run this way. Um, then this way. So you're avoiding each other. And your range DPS, who all had the same color, just stand along this area. After they get the first tick from orange, you can stand in the middle. And you just stand along this area with the orange debuff. Um, now, once you do the swap, so melee DPS from this side uh, will run over. You need to make sure that you pull the adds apart so that they're more than 60 yards apart. Uh, I believe it's 60 yards because you need to be out of range of the refresh of the other ad. So if I'm a melee DPS with the orange debuff, I was hitting the orange ad, I run over, 
and I stop right here waiting on the on my debuff to switch to purple, it's not going to switch to purple. You're just going to get refreshed on orange. Uh, it doesn't matter that you're closer to purple add. Uh, if you still have the orange debuff, as long as you're within range of the orange add, you will keep refreshing. So you need to move out of range of the orange add, drop your debuff, and then the purple debuff gets applied to you. Your range DPS do the same. They move up here. Um, they drop their orange debuff, get, pick up the purple debuff, then they go back to the middle. Um, so then this means that your range DPS can help out on either add, depending on which one's higher, um, because their debuff is not going to randomly switch as they move closer to one or closer to the other. So this frees up a lot of your DPS. Um, with our strategy, your range DPS can help on either add. With some other strategies where you hard stack one side and then do hard swap, you're kind of stuck. If you don't have the DPS cooldowns, you just have to wait on the other side. Um, but that is pretty much how the intermission works. And both times you do this, um, the swap happens at six stacks. So let's look at how that actually looks on footage. Up phases should not give you any trouble. It's literally just the intermission. You pull mob, get orange debuff on this side, purple on the other. Um, all of our range DPS get orange. We move to the wall. Um, do all the mechanics, you know, drop puddles on the wall. You can stack puddles on top of old puddles. Big thing is just that, you know, you have to dodge these blue circles. They deal a ton of damage and you just stress your healers. Um, tanks never swap, do damage, and also immunities don't work anymore, so you can't immune off this debuff. In this clip, we swap at 5 stacks, on progression we swapped at 6. This is just because we were so ahead on DPS. Um, but as you can see, I move close to this add, the other debuff falls, then I can go and DPS. Stack puddle on top of the old one, now I get the purple debuff. So our range DPS did the same. They should be getting purple. There you go. All of our range DPS are now purple debuffs. Um, so now they can go back to the middle and help out with either add as needed. And then obviously kill these at the same time. After you kill these, be very careful not to just like randomly run to the boss because you're going to blow people up. You want to wait on your debuff to fall off before you either, before you start moving towards the side that you're normally on. Um, just to avoid triggering explosions. Mythic debuffs go out, they run to the side, so they're not in anyone's way. Chain goes out, only a few of us soaked this. Like, there's only three of us in this one. Um, we still managed to do it with a Windrush, a Roar, and a few movement cooldowns. This Abductor does a lot of damage. So you, want, you never want to go into an intermission phase with an abductor alive. That's why I was saying at the beginning that the push timings are extremely important. Um, you want to kill the second abductor, then push before the third, or you want to push before the second. You never want to get a fresh abductor, then push into the intermission. That's going to wipe you uh, most of the time because your tanks are going to die since they're far from each other and not able to uh, taunt swap. So from there on, the fight is second intermission works exactly the same way as the first one. Um, one thing, the second intermission, intermission might take you a little longer because you want to save cooldowns for the last burn. But, you know, once you get through it, you lost and you kill the boss. Um, like once you've gone through the second intermission, it's pretty much free. You just kill the boss with lust and, you know, about a minute. Um, so that is Eye of the Jailer. Overall, not a very complex fight, it's just you have to do the movement correctly in the intermission, otherwise you're going to wipe. Pretty much it.